friends uh, we are going to learn this uh, related concept related in the sense this concept is related to the concept of supply which we have already studied and uh, this topic is uh, about uh, composite supply and mixed supply sometimes what happens we find certain supplies uh, are in fact the combination of various supplies okay so you purchase something and in addition to that something is given to you or you are by you buy a uh, package supply kind of thing so all these things uh, how to deal with all these issues in gst we are going to learn today so let me share the screen with you right now first we'll understand what is uh, this composite supply and this supply how they will be taxed how gst will be levied on that uh, already we have covered section 7 which are dealing with the meaning of supply we will be again revisiting that section but now let us visit uh, the section 8 of CGST which talks about the definition or not exactly definition the meaning of uh, or how tax will be levied on composite supply and mixed supply first we will be seeing how tax will be levied on that then we will try to understand what the meaning of these two things if you read this section 8 its heading is tax liability of composite and mixed supply. It says the tax liability on composite and mixed supply shall be determined in the following manner. Okay, two different principles we have to understand. First of all, if the it is a composite supply, then it will be taxable in a different way. And if it's a mixed supply, it will be liable to tax in a different way. Okay. In case it is a composite supply, so what this clause says that a composite supply comprising two or more supplies, one of which is a principal supply. That means in case we are finding it is a composite supply, two or more supplies are bundled and supplied together, we have to find out which one is the principal supply. Okay. Shall be treated as a supply of such principal supply. That means it will be treated as if the entire supply is for that principal supply. Okay, suppose product A, product B, product C are bundled together and supplied, out of which product A is the main supply. That means it will be assumed that the entire thing is supply of product A. Once we are saying this is the principal supply, then the rate which is applicable to the principal supply shall be applicable to the entire bundle. That is the point. But for that thing, what we should conclude? We should be able to conclude it is a composite supply. We should be able to conclude that this is the principal supply. Then only you can levy tax at the rate which is applicable to the principal supply. But in case it is not a complete supply, it can be a mixed supply. And in case it is a mixed supply, and it may comprise of two or more supplies, then how it will be treated? It will be treated as supply of the particular supply that attracts highest rate of tax. Okay. Highest rate of tax means, suppose again, there is a bundled supply, A, B, C, three items are there, and they're supplied in a bundled manner. And rate of tax, one case is 5%, another case is 18%, another case is 28% then it will be taxed at the 28% because it's not a composite supply, it's a mixed supply. So this is the provision of section 8. I think you have understood. Yes or no? Did you understand? Okay. Yes, you have already understood it. Now, let us recapitulate the meaning of supply, which you have already long time ago. For that thing, we have to go to six and seven, and you already know the definition is inclusive. Okay, so all forms of supply of goods and services are both such as sale, transport, barter, exchange, license, rental, lease, or disposals made or agreed to be made for a constitution by person in the course of furtherance of business is normally called as supply. 
we have thoroughly understood it, thoroughly discussed and analyzed all these things. And also we know that imposition of services for a constitution, even if it is, it is not in the course of furtherance of business, can also be regarded as supply. And we also know there are certain activities which are specified in the single one, which is made or agreed to made without consideration, but still that will be regarded as supply. So this concept already we know. Supply, that this supply, that means supply of goods or services or both, can be bundled. Okay, can be bundled. When it is bundled, that means several items are supplied together. We'll understand what is the meaning of this bundle supply. So friends, you already know, GST is applicable on individual goods and services are both at notified rates. We have already seen various rates are there. Okay, you can refer to the CGST. Uh, you can refer to the CBIC site and find out what is the rate. If you want, I will show you right now. Let me first show you how you can find out the rates. I had shown you earlier. Once again, still I'm trying to do it. If you go to CBIC site, let me take you to the CBIC site first. Are you able to see it? Yes or no? This is the home page of Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. You can click here under GST. Okay, uh, uh, here is the link, GST rates and ready vectors. You can click here, you can click here, GST rates. You can find out GST rates here. Okay, so GST rate services, goods rate. It can be downloaded, GST ready vectors, updated notifications, you can see it here. So by referring here, you can find out various rates. Okay, GST rate for goods. Anyone you can see it. Let me see your GST rate ready right enough, which will help you. So you can find out this is the CGST rate in fact. You see, CGST is 2.5%. That means SGST another 2.5% is the 5% is the rate total. IGST rate will be 5%. You can refer to here. These are the you see rates. You here you see six percent. That means total IGST will be twelve percent. Here you see nine percent rate. That means IGST will be eighteen percent like this. So right GST rate finders are there in CBIC website. You can refer. So GST is levied at a particular rate. So for different kind of goods or for different kind of uh, services, different rates are applied. Now friends, that's what we know. Okay, and uh, which rate is to be applied? If it is a single commodity or single goods are supplied, single supply is supplied, then no issue. You can go to the GST rate finder, you can find out what is the rate. But it will create some problem if the supply is of individual goods or certain individual goods are combined together and supplied as a single supply. Right. That means. When goods are clearly identifiable or supplies or services are clearly identifiable, then very easily we can find out the rate. When they're not clearly identifiable, they're supplied as a bundle, then we, we may face some difficulty in finding out the appropriate rate for that. Because for different goods are there in that bundle and different rates are applicable. Okay, so this is the situation where we find it difficult to identify the rate. Why it is so? Because suppliers, supplies are not clearly identified. So these are in fact the supplies of combination of goods or combination of services or combination of goods and services of, and both. And each individual component of the suppliers may attract different rate of tax. Okay, so this creates a challenge. What is the rate? What is the appropriate? For that reason, the GST law has clearly stated that we have to, in that situation, first of all, we have to decide or we have to conclude whether this bundled supplies are composite supplies or mixed supplies. If it is a composite supply, then you have to apply different principle. 
and if they mix supply, you apply one more thing, some other principle. Okay, now next question comes on what basis we'll be deciding whether it's a composite supply or mixed supply. For that thing, you have to understand one more concept that the concept of natural bundling. If they're naturally bundled, or the supplies and goods are naturally bundled, we can call it is a case of composite supply. If it is not naturally bundled, we can refer it as a situation of mixed supply. Okay. Now that therefore at this situation, it is important for us to understand the concept of bundling, how goods can be bundled. Okay, when I say bundled supply, or goods are bundled, or goods are supplied in a bundled manner. A bundled supply can be considered as a group of two or more goods and services. Which are supplied together. And we have to keep the following points in mind in order to think or in order to know that whether it is a bundle supply or not. First of all, if the products and services are considered as a package by the buyer, if the buyer thinks that it's a package, then we may consider it a bundle supply. For example, suppose you visit a hotel to stay. So normally, buyer thinks that uh, maybe breakfast or maybe one major meal can be come as a complimentary. That means it is a package. I'm staying in the hotel means I'm eligible for that. So it can be an example of a bundle. Right. Sim similarly, that is one way. That is on the basis of buyer's expectation, we can decide whether it's a bundle supply or not. Similarly, on the basis of service providers, that means what does normally most of the service providers provide. On that basis also we can decide whether it's a bundle supplier. For example, if most of the airlines provide food during their uh, travel, okay, food is provided to the passengers when they travel. Most of the airlines provide that. That means you can say this is a practice. Providers has to provide this. Thing will also be regarded as a bundle sum. Okay. And the nature of transaction can also be a basis on which you can decide whether it's a bundle supply or not. For example, in hotels, uh, laundry services are also provided. So there might be issue whether it's a bundle supply or not. One has to think. And uh, on the basis of availability, of the product or availability of service, also one can decide whether it's a bundle supply or not. If products are not individually available, that means it has to be taken along with some other products. Individually, you cannot buy. Then definitely it's a bundle supply. Or one more, uh, in, uh, there may be one more factor on the basis of which one may decide whether it's a bundle supply or not. That is how it is advertised. If the product is advertised, or the supplier is advertising is at a package. So on that basis, it can be also decided whether it is a bundle supplier. So now I think you have understood what is a bundle supply. Bundle supply, okay, we have understood combination of goods and services supplied to you. But now the question comes: is it naturally bundled? That means normally it comes like that. If it is naturally bundled, then definitely we will call it as a composite supply. But if it is not so naturally bundled, but supplier has somehow created a package, then it's a mixed supply. Only. It's not a naturally bundled supply. Okay. Now, friends, uh, let us understand the meaning of composite supplies first. Okay, if you initially, uh, if you see the first cover page, let us say this is a kind of supply. Suppose uh, one pane is supplied along with a tie, you can consider this is a mixed supply. It is not an example of uh, composite supply. But hotel stay is, let us say, hotel stay service is provided in addition to that, food is provided. You can, this is an example of composite supply. 
Okay. And if it is a big supply, you have to see what is the rate applicable to this pain, what is the rate applicable to the tie, then whatever is the highest rate that will be applicable to both. If it is a composite supply, you have to say what is the principal supply, whether this is principal or this is principal. So here we can conclude that the stay is the principal supply. So that rate will be applicable to both. This is the logic. Now we'll understand the meaning of composite supply. This means a supply made by a taxable person to a recipient and comprises two or more taxable supplies of goods or services, or both or any combination thereof. It may be two more goods, two more services, or one good, one services, maybe any combination there. And that too, I have to see, are naturally bundled and supplied in conjunction with each other in ordinary course of business. You have to see it is naturally bundled and it is supplied in conjunction with each other. And this kind of supply must be made in ordinary course of business. And if that is so, one of which is a principal supply. Suppose in a hotel you are staying, and food is supplied to uh, you along with that. Then naturally you can conclude that principal supply is staying. That is what your hoteler is supplying food. And food is giving you as a complementary. And that is an example of composite supply. So in every composite supply, goods and services both are bundled going to a natural necessity. It's a natural necessity. Whenever you will be staying in the hotel, you will be having food. And most of the service providers are providing that. And it is also buyer's expectation that if you are staying in the hotel, this thing should also be provided to me. So on the basis of buyer's expectation, on the basis of supplier's practice, right? And on the basis of the fact uh, that it is naturally bundled, so you can conclude that it is a composite supply. And the element in composite supply are dependent on principal supply. In every composite supply, there has to be a principal supply. And that trait will be applicable. So if you want to know what is the meaning of principal supply in this context, in the context of composite supply, then we have to refer to section 2, clause 90 of CGST to understand the term principal supply. Principal supply is the supply of goods and services which constitute the predominant element of a composite supply and to which any other supply for being a part of that composite supply is ancillary. That means, what is principal supply? It's the predominant element. And other supplies are ancillary. Okay, we are going in an aircraft. So, what is the supply? The service of this traveling facility. That is the supply, principal supply. Food is ancillary. Or you are staying in the hotel, the supply of stay facility is the principal supply. Food is ancillary. Okay. So, principal supply is the predominant element, and other supplies are ancillary. Now, friends. Let us look at this tax liability of the composite supply. Once we know this is a composite supply, the supply is naturally bundled. And one of this supply is a principal supply. Then the entire supply shall be treated as if the principal supply has been treated. Okay, that means entire supply has been treated as the supply of such principles. As such, the rate which is applicable to the principal supply will be applied to the entire supply. This is an example we'll see. Let us say ABC manufacturers have entered into a contract with CDE Limited for supply of ready-made shirts packed in a designer boxes at CDE's outlet. So CDE is having an outlet, ABC manufacturer will supplying it at the outlet itself. If you observe this kind of contract, this kind of supply involves various kinds of supplies. First of all, supply of goods, 
That means they charge such things of that. Then packing of material, that means they have to pack in a designer boxes. The transportation from the factory, it has to go to the outlet of CDE. The transportation is also has to be provided. And also insurance. It also says one more if you refer here further, ABC manufacturers would also get them insured during transit. Transit insurance. That also has to be. So, in fact, the ABC is supplying to CDE these four kind of goods and services. One is supply of goods, packing of material, third one is transport, fourth is insurance. Okay. If you look at here, it means look that this is the nature of business is such that it is such to made like this. It is an example of naturally bundled supply in this nature of business. And here, if it is so, one can easily identify what is the principal supply. Can you identify what is the principal supply among this supply of goods, packing of material, transportation, and insurance? Which one is the principal supply? Can anyone quickly identify? So here definitely the principal supply is supply of goods. That means supply of sums. Some more examples, let us see here. When a consumer buys a television set, he also gets mandatory warranty and maintenance contract with the TV. Okay, this is again one more example of composition. Where you can easily identify that TV is the principal supplier. Warranty and maintenance services are ancillary. This is again one. This is this can be taken one more example of composition. Similarly, travel ticket from Mumbai to Delhi may include service of food, big serve on board, free insurance, and use of airport launch. See, so many services are bundled and supplied. In this case, transportation of passengers constitutes the predominant element. Therefore, that is the principal supply. All other supplies, that is supply of food, food is the goods supply. Insurance, the right to use launch, all these things are ancillary supplies. Okay. Wars contract and restaurant services are also classic example of composite supply. Wars contract, you supply material as well as you supply some services. In a restaurant also, you supply some material, but also supply some services. So these are also examples of composite contract. But however, GST law uh, specifies or GST law identifies both of these supplies, the restaurant service as well as the contract, are supplies of services, not supply of goods. And they're chargeable at specific rates. First contract rates, around 18% is charged on that. And for restaurant, some situations, 5%, some situations, 12%, some situations, 18% also charged. So rates are different, depending upon what kind of restaurant we are talking about and whether we are taking ITC or not. So on that basis, different rates are applicable for restaurant. Now, what we are discussing at here, how to determine whether the services are bundled in ordinary course of business or not, or artificially the supplier is trying to bundle them. We have to see that. So there is a possibility that principal supply may attract lower rate of time. Consequently, the entire supply may be subjected to lower rate of tax. Therefore, one has to, one has to be carefully decide what is principal supply. And is it bundled ordinary in the ordinary course of business? Okay, so there are in fact several indicators on the basis of those indicators one will be able to ascertain whether the supplies are naturally bundled or not. It will depend 
whether this practice of bundling is normal and is a frequent practice which is followed by the so plan. Okay, if it is a normal and a frequent practice, then that is an indication that it might be naturally bundled. So these are some indications we'll see. First of all, the perception of consumer. What consumer perceives? If the large number of service expands perceives it as a bundle service, the purpose or large number of users or service expand reasonably expect that such services are to be provided as a package, then you can say this is a naturally bundled service naturally bundled supply in ordinary course of business. Because the recipients are expecting, so. all the recipients are expecting that if they're staying in the hotel, you have to give food along with that. So on the basis of expectation, on the basis of perceptions of the consistency, it can be concluded whether it is naturally bundled. Or Majority of service provider in a particular area of business provides similar bundle services. Most of the service providers, you see, they provide the similar kind of thing. Let us say catering on board, that means in the flight, and transportation of transportation by air is a bundle because most of the airlines, so majority of the airlines, provide these services. Okay, if someone is uh, Getting, uh, okay, someone is uh, traveling in air, then onboard catering services may be provided. Them. This can be treated as an example of bundle service, naturally bundled supply, consequently composite uh, supply. The nature of various services in the bundled services will also help in determining whether services are bundled in the course of business or not. Okay. When I say nature of various services, that means ability in tools. Uh, by seeing that uh, service, by seeing that supply, you should be able to identify that one of this supply or one of these services is the main service. And all other services are incidental or ancillary to the main service. Then we can say the nature of service is that that one main service has to be provided or one main supply has to be provided for and other incidental supplies has to be made incidental. Okay, so again, I go back to our original example. If you stay in your hotel, then breakfast and one major meal might be uh, an incidental supply. But the principal supply is your stay, stay arrangement, or provision of rooms by the hoteler. So these are some of the indicators. There are other illustrative indicators are also, also there on the basis of facts and circumstances one has to decide whether it is naturally bundled or not. Okay, as we had discussed earlier, whether these elements are naturally advertised as a package. If they are naturally advertised as a package, or it's a normal practice to advertise all these supplies as a package, then you can say it is again a normal practice that in ordinary course of business, this has to be supplied. Consequently, it is a component. One more indicator is that whether the various elements which are there in the bundle are available separately. If they are not separately available, then definitely it is a component. You have to buy it at a bad bundle. The different elements are integral to the overall supply. That indicates if one or more is removed, the nature of supply will be affected. So you cannot remove them. So it is an integral part of the process. On the basis of these things, in fact, one has to decide whether it's a composite supply or not. Now you might be thinking how to distinguish uh, between composite supply and mixed supply. Honestly, there is no straight jacket formula on the basis of which one can find out whether it's a big supplier or composite. The key concept here is that whether goods are naturally bundled in the course of business or not. So each case needs to be individually examined. 
in the backdrop of this concept, naturally bundled or not. Hope you have understood up to this. If you find that groups are naturally bundled, then it's a composition. And in that case, you have to find out what is that supply that constitutes the principal supply. So again, we need to classify those things, so which are the principal supply, which are the incidental supplies. Okay. Let us see one more case. In case, servicing of cars involving supply of both goods and services. Suppose when you go for service of servicing of your vehicle, you know some materials are also supplied. Maybe oil, maybe some spare parts are supplied, plus service charges are also levied, which is labor charges. So now question may come, is it an example of composite supply or not? But this particular issue has been clarified by Central Board of Excise and Customs. It has clarified that the goods and services would be levyable to tax at the rates applicable to such goods and services separately. Different rates will be applicable. Where the value of the goods and services are shown separately. If in the invoices it is shown, this is the supply of goods and it's a supply of services. So you need not bother whether it is a composite supply or mixed supply separately, it will be applied. This has been clarified in CBSC circular number. You see the circular number 47 by 21 by 2018, dated 8 6 2018. So this has been clear. So no need to add confusion to this. So it has to be charged separately. Other cases, other cases we'll see some example. First, you see this table. Many items are covered. You may have a look at this. Let us say printed books, pamphlets, brochures, envelopes, annual reports, leaflets cartoons, boxes, etc. printed with design, logo, address or other address or other contents supplied by the recipient of such printed goods. That means there might be situation. You want to print something and you have supplying the material on the basis on, on the by using that material, the printer is printing the things. Okay. Now two situations may come here. First of all, you see, in case of printing of books, pamphlet, annual reports and like where the content is supplied by the publisher. Let us say I am, I want to get it printed and I am supplying the content where only the content is supplied by the publisher. And the person who owns the usage right to the intangible inputs, while the physical input, including paper, used for printing belonging to the printer. I will be giving the content that this is the material which is to type. But the physical inputs like paper has to be uh, supplied by the print, supply of printing. Okay, in this case, how it will be printed? I repeat once again, where only the content is supplied by the publisher or the person who wants the right. Okay, while the physical inputs, including paper used to be printing, belong to the printer, then the supply of printing is the principal supply. And therefore, this supply would constitute supply of service. So it's a supply of service. Okay, because the printing activity is the principal supply not the supply of material, even if he's supplying the material. Suppose I am giving the, the content. The printer is using his own paper and getting it printed for me. The question comes, is it a supply of goods or is it supply of service? Here, it will be supply of service because printing is the principal element in it. On the other hand, in case supply printed envelopes, envelopes, letter cards, printed boxes, tissues, napkins, etc., by the printer, using its physical inputs, including the paper, to print the design, logo, etc., supplied by the recipient goods, 
the predominant element is supply of goods. Here we are talking about, it is not about the books, pamphlets, browsers, etc. And books and pamphlets, browsers, etc. What happens? What is important is the content. But whereas envelopes, letter cards, printed box, what is important is the goods. In this case, you can see the predominant supply is supply of goods. Therefore, CBC has clarified that it is the supply of goods. Are you getting? Because the predominant element is supply of goods and the supply of printing and the content is ancillary. So like this, it has to, it will vary from pack to pack, situation to situation. You have to see whether supply of goods is the principal thing or supply of uh, services is the principal thing. On that basis, it has to be decided. Activity of boss bodybuilding. Let us say in this can this kind of supply when the body of a boss is built, material is supplied as well as services are also supplied. Okay, so it has been clarified by supply number this, which you can see 34 by 8 by 2018. It will depend upon the facts and circumstances of this case. There is no straight jacket formula here. On that basis, it has to decide what is the principal supply. Now, in case of retrading of tires, suppose the used tires are retraded, the process, so predominant element in the process of retrading is the supply of services. Of course, retraded is the supply of services, but rubber is also supplied. The rubber used in retrading is an ancillary supply. Therefore, the principal supply is the supply of services. But supply of retraded tires, where old tires belong to the supplier. Supplier is supplying retreated tires. That means he's selling retreated tires. Then it is supply of goods. Okay, so two things are possible. Retreated tires are supplied, or this retreading service is provided. When retreading service is provided, the principal element is supply of service. Rubber supply is incidental. But when tires are directly retreated, service is not provided. That is supply of goods. This has also been circulated by CBIC circular. Now, friends, now let us learn this concept. That is the concept of mixed supply. What is mixed supply? Two or more individual supplies of the goods or combination thereof made in conjunction with each other by a taxable person for a single price where such supply does not constitute composite supply. That means two more goods or services are supplied, but it is not a composite supply. That means first we have to decide is it a composite supply. If it is not a composite supply, then only we can think if it is a mixed supply. The individual supplies are independent of each other and not, not naturally bundled. This is one more key element of mixed supply that they are not naturally bundled. They are independent. Okay. In order to identify if the particular supply is big supply, the first requisite is that we have to rule out that it's not a composite supply. If it is a composite supply, then fine. First, you have to see that it is not a composite supply. Then only it can be mixed supply. Supply can be mixed supply only if it is not a composite supply. If transaction consists of supplies not naturally bundled in the ordinary course of business, it can be a mixed supply. And you know, as you are discussing, once it is a mixed supply, then how it will be taxed? The mixed supplies are classified in terms of supply of goods and services, attracting highest rate of tax. This means once the amenability of transaction as a composite supply is ruled out. Once you know that there is no possibility, it cannot be a composite supply, then it's a mixed supply. Once it's a mixed supply, it is classified 
in terms of the supply of the goods, which attracts highest revenue. Okay, I repeat, a mixed supply comprising of two or more suppliers shall be treated as supply of that particular supply that attracts highest rate of tax. For example, a supply of a packaged container which contains, let us say, canned foods, sweets, chocolates, cakes, fruits, arated waters, arated drinks, fruit juices. Let us say, I create a bundle of these things and then it is supplied for a single price. Then this is an example, it's a perfect example of a mix-up. They're not naturally bundled. Someone has created a bundle and supply. Each of these items can be supplied separately and they are not dependent on each other. They can be supplied separately, but if they are supplied separately, that will not be treated as a mixed supply. But if they are bundled artificially and supplied, then it is an example of mixed supply. Suppose anything, suppose a shopkeeper, what he is doing, uh, he is selling the storage water bottles along with the refrigerator. The refrigerator is packed with water bottles and he is selling the refrigerator along with the bottle. That is bottle and refrigerator can be priced independent, can be sold separately. If they're sold separately, they're two different suppliers. But they, if they're together, they're sold for some reason. Then you cannot say it's a naturally bought. No one in the industry sells like this. It is not the expectation of the recipient, nor it is the practice from the supplier's point. So this is, an, this is not naturally bought, consequently it's a mix. Okay, then we have to pick up which item attracts highest rate of tax, the refrigerator or what? On that basis, tax will be levied. One more example I can give, that one floor of the house, let us say used for residence, that means is through a single rent deed, let us say uh, house is rented. One floor can be used for residence and the other floor can be used for commercial purposes. So you can definitely say this is again an example of mixed supply. Renting for two different purposes, which are not naturally bundled in the ordinary course of business, is an example of mixed supply. Okay. Now key differences if you want to find out that uh, in case of composite supply, we have to find out the principal item. The rate applicable is the rate which is applicable to the principal item. In case of mixed supply, we have to find out what is the item that attracts high, highest rate of tax and tax will be applicable. Whatever tax rate which is applicable to the item, that means the highest tax rate will be applicable for the entire mix supply. So this is the concept we have understood so far. Are these two strings? If you can recapitulate, we have already understood that section 7 this chart summarizes that in which situation an activity can be treated as a supply and which situation it will not be treated as a supply so section 7 we have already understood and uh, section 8 who talks about taxability of the composite and mixed supply that also this chart summarizes composite supply means consists of two or more supplies naturally bundled one is a principal supply, others are ancillary supply. Okay. For example, of composite supply, one more example you can take it charger provided with mobile phones. Customers expect that thing, and supplier is also supplying that thing. So, in that case, what will happen? The rate applicable to the principal supply will be applied. Mixed supply, which is not a composite supply, first of all. They are not naturally bundled, can be supplied individually. Okay, for example, is the gift pack comprising of chocolates, candies, sweets, balloons, etc. It's an example of mixed supply. And we have to find out what is the item on which highest rate is applicable. That rate will be applicable to the entire supply. Okay, so this is the concept of mixed supply and composite supply. Hope 
it is clear to you the entire concept with this all the supply related concept we have closed we have covered all this thing. okay now in the next session we'll be learning some new concepts so probably we'll be learning about uh, this composition scheme concept and then we'll be learning the registration process registration process as, as well as the related law related to registration of GST. all these things will be learning in the next session is it clear to you up to this thank you hope you do not have any query if you have any query you can raise it right now thanks a lot